You might have heard the 30 plants in a week challenge. Well, today I'm gonna to try to eat 30 different plants every single day. Stick around and see how that goes. So I got eight. If I can get five plants out of that, I'd be shocked. I'm not feeling super confident about dinner tonight. I might have gone under my 30 today. It's pretty processed food, I don't think it should count. I'm eating with other people and I can't control it. I'm gonna need to up my lunch and my dinner. So some of you may have seen this trend going around the internet and things like YouTube where people try to eat 30 different plants a week. I first came across this from following Dr. Will Bolsovich, who among other things is the author of the Fuel fi Fiber Fueled Cookbook. I got it right here because we're actually in the middle of doing a cookbook review for it. So stick around for this video sometime in the near future. I've seen the number 30 thrown around quite a bit when it comes to diversity in the diet. Is that the magic number every seven days? In some ways, this is the magic number. This is coming from the actual science that, that shows us that eating a wide variety is in fact the right choice in terms of supporting a healthy gut, whether you're a vegan or pescatarian or vegetarian or an omnivore. Eating 30 different varieties of plants per week was the factor that was associated with the healthiest gut. Dr. Will is a gut expert. And for those of you who follow this channel, you know that my wife, Wooly, he, she's got some gut issues. So this video, it speaks to me. You know, we've all heard that we should eat the rainbow, but why? We're gonna talk about that. Here's something else that stood out to me in that interview with Dr. Will. Just because the study said 30 doesn't mean you should stop at 30. Why not 35? Why not 40? Every single plant has its own unique mix of fiber, phytochemicals, polyphenols, vitamins, minerals, protein, healthy fats that are intended to support your body, to nurture your body, to make it more healthy. And so as a result of that, when we consume a wide variety of plants and we mix them together, we are really truly creating a diet that um, is unstoppable. So that's why I'm not going to eat 30 plants a week. I'm gonna to try to eat 30 different plants every single day. In this video, I'm also gonna to explain to you why it's important for our bodies to have a wide variety of different plants. We're gonna talk about what qualifies as a plant because it can be confusing. I'm gonna give you tips on how to get a wide variety as well as some meal ideas. And you're also gonna see what I eat this week. So this is kind of technically a what I eat in a week video. So there's a bonus, except for the parts that I might have forgotten to tape here and there because you know, life and stuff. We're gonna see if I'm actually able to get 30 different plants every day, but more importantly, how many unique plants do I eat throughout the week? Because I'm really curious about that. Make a prediction in the comments down below of how many different plants you think I'll eat throughout the entire week, and I'll let you know at the end of the video. Also consider doing your own count of how many different plants you eat in a day or week and come back and let us know in the comments down below. Before we jump into all of this, I'd like to give a shout out to some of the people who have said hello to us in the comments down below. Mary Ellen from Sussex Parish, Canada. Jamie from Hummelston, PA. Tanya from Antigonish, Nova Scotia. I'm almost entirely sure I said that right. I should get that right, it's in my own country. Maureen from Houston, Texas. Candace from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, also in Canada. Denise from the United Kingdom. A sexual atheist from Colorado or asexual atheist because all the words go together. So I'm not sure is it asexual or asexual. Anyway, you know, let us know. Let me know in the comments down below. Myrn from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Susan from Washington, PA. And Lori from Staten Island, New York. If you'd like a shutter, all you have to do is say hello to us in the comments down below. Let us know who you are, where you're watching from, and what you thought of this video. Another way to get a bump up on that shoutout list is by being a member in our Mighties Only Network. Not only do you get a bump up on that increasingly longer shoutout list we have going on, but you also get members only live streams. You get message boards full of amazing like-minded individuals. You get some giveaways from time to time and you get early access to these videos. So consider signing up for the price of a crappy cup of coffee a month. Other ways to support us are our merch store. You can give us a super thanks, the little tip jar down below. And also, if you're on Instagram, come check us out over there because we're just slowly building up our following over there with little shorts videos and, and photos and all the, all the fun stuff. All right, enough of that. How did I do on day one of this? This is breakfast number one. How many plants are in this breakfast? Okay, so this is the leftover rice pudding. You might have seen this in another video we're doing, or maybe that video won't be coming out for a while. Anyway, in the rice pudding itself, there's currants. 
rice, cashews, and peanuts in the cream, blueberries, raspberries, apples, and hemp seeds. So I got eight. I'm gonna need to up my lunch and my dinner. I just remembered this is a mixed berry in here. So I've got blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. So I actually have, I have 10. Nice start. That, that made me so much happier, I don't know why. Tea. All right, so for lunch, I don't wanna brag, but I might hit my 30 plants right here at lunch. I forgot this morning um, to mention that I had my, my detox drink, which includes turmeric, ginger, garlic, uh, lemon. So those four things right there I missed this morning. So now what do I got here? I've got like these little uh, oat cookie things that have apple in them. So I can't count the apple because I already had apple today. But there's oats in there, little orange corn tortilla things. And maybe you say these are processed so they don't count, but I also have corn in my little dip here. So I've got uh, a combination of two things in my bowl. They're leftovers. One is this, you know, eight layer nacho dip I made. And then this like dish I made for this video we're working on. It's like a tomato Mexican quinoa rice thing with some beans and some sauce on top. Red kidney beans, tomatoes in there from the salsa, cucumbers, avocado. And in that cheese sauce is pepper and cashews and nutritional yeast. Is that gonna count? I'm gonna count it. Olives, green onion, quinoa. Did I say jalapenos already? And then the sauce, which has tahini in it, date in it a little bit, salsa. I might, did I hit 20 for lunch? I've kind of been lazy here and I'm combining like leftovers from two meals, but it's nice that they're diverse meals. Oh, and chocolate. It's like a ginger turmeric chocolate. So in there, I've already had the ginger and turmeric from my other drink, but chocolate, cocoa is a plant. Uh, again, maybe we don't count it because it's processed, but that's another one right there. I'm gonna count it because this is my video. You can disagree with me in the comments though. I forgot to get a shot of my dinner, but here is like the aftermath of ingredients. So let's count the plants here. We got rice, tomatoes we already had earlier, tomato sauce, soy from the tofu ricotta. This is where it gets harder by the end of the day. This is why, yeah, okay. Broccoli, mushrooms, peas, I think my total is 32, but if I'm wrong, I'll post it right here. So today I tried, I put a real effort into it. Let's see what I can do tomorrow. So why 30 plants a week? To my notes. So apparently in 2018, scientists published a resort from the American Gut Project, which was a collaboration of researchers and more than 10,000 citizen scientists from the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. These volunteers shared samples about their eating habits. They also shared their poop samples. I started to look into how those were shared, and then I stopped because I was worried about my internet search history. Anyway, once they had those samples, the researchers analyzed them to find out which gut bugs they contained. The study showed that the participants who ate a wider variety of plant foods had a more diverse gut microbiome. Participants who ate more than 30 plants a week were considered to have more good gut bugs than those who didn't. Their poop samples also contain a higher level of healthy chemicals produced by the bacteria. And the idea of 30 plants a week is not just a fad, there's actual science to back it up. Eating a wide variety of different plants is super good for your gut microbiome. That's the community of bacteria and other bugs that live in your gut. It's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. This is because plants contain something called prebiotics, which is essentially a fuel for your good gut bugs. Gut bugs was the name of a band I was in high school as well. That's not true. I wish it was though. Can you, I want a t-shirt for that band, even though it's not real. What kind of music do you think they play? The prebiotics in plants contain different fibers and carbohydrates, as well as something called polyphenols. Polyphenols are responsible for the different colors in different plants. And depending which plant it is, they have different antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Different plants contain different prebiotics, which in turn feed different gut bugs. The more the better. Because the more plants you eat, the more diversity you have going on inside of your gut microbiome. A more diverse microbiome that is rich in beneficial bugs has links to better functioning and a more resilient gut. What does that mean? It means that you get to digest fiber in a more complete way that leads to awesome things like preventing weight gain, diabetes, 
heart disease, and the risk of some cancers. The gut microbiome also controls how your immune system works. So by communicating with your immune cells, the gut microbiome can also control how your body responds to infection. And new research suggests that the gut microbiome can also affect the central nervous system, which controls brain function. To wrap this all up, healthy gut equals good. So what counts? If the idea of eating 30 different plants seems daunting to you, I've got some good news. Plants aren't just fruits and vegetables. Though you should still eat as many of those as possible, but what actually counts as a plant in the way that we're talking about it extends far beyond that. I'll get to that in a second. Getting back to the concept of eating the rainbow. So if you have got a yellow pepper, a red pepper, and a green pepper, that actually counts as three different plants because the different colors in them create different polyphenols, different good stuff. Each of those fuel different strains of the gut microbiome, which means that they all have different health benefits. So obviously any and all vegetables count. So go for a wide variety. Next time you're in the grocery store, wander around that produce aisle a little bit. Pick up something you've never tried before. Go on your phone, do a quick little research on what you could use it for, but just experiment and try to get something new in your system that's never been there before, especially if it's a different color. I know we always say you should eat your greens, but you should eat your other colors too. Same goes with fruit. You know, get all the fruits you normally like, but experiment and try something different. Maybe something you haven't tried before, like a, a dragon fruit, a papaya. And don't forget, there's a lot of things that we don't actually think of as fruit that are technically fruit. Things like peppers and avocados and tomatoes. Those are fruit. Beans and legumes are also considered as plants, and there's a huge variety of those. Everything from chickpeas to various lentils, butter beans, kidney beans, yada, yada, yada. Whole grains also count, and there is a wide variety of those from oats to quinoa, brown rice, buckwheat, wheat as well. And I know you're asking, does that mean that like bread and pasta counts as a plant? Technically, but remember that whole grains are better for you than processed grains, especially, you know, brown wheat versus white wheat and pasta and rice and all those kind of things as well, right? Go for whole grains. They're just gonna have more stuff for those, those healthy gut thingies we talked about. Nuts and seeds count, obviously. Everything from peanuts to chia seeds, hemp seeds, cashews, so on and so forth. Also herbs and spices count, and those are the things that you can really use to boost up your numbers. Because the beauty is you don't actually need to eat a specific amount of a plant for it to count. Even small pinches of herbs and spices make a difference. And here's some foods that count that you might not have expected. Popcorn, coffee, dark chocolate. You're welcome. I don't know why I'm taking credit for that. It's not like I created the gut microbiomes that allow those things to be good for you. But I'm gonna say you're welcome anyway. Now, before I give you some tips on how to use these foods in a variety of different ways, let's check back in and see how I'm doing on my whole 30 plants a day count thing. Morning. I have to walk the dog early because I'm going to a, a pancake breakfast at any school, which I just realized I'm, if I can get five plants out of that, I'd be shocked. I might be playing catch up after that today. But I will start my day with my lemon drink, which will give me ginger, garlic, turmeric, lemon, apple cider vinegar. Does that count? Is that a thing? Okay, here I go. I gamed the system a little bit and I uh, had some strawberries and one of these small little oat cookie things that have oats and apples, other things that I won't count because I can't remember. Eight things going on here. Good start. So that was a breakfast. I had waffles, like from a box. So, you know, very crispy. <laughs> I don't know what was in them. I'm gonna assume some kind of like grain mixture. So let's call that two plants. Oh, I don't know what the heck they are. And the saddest fruit cup, which probably had, let's see, there's pomegranate in there. There was peach, cantaloupe, pineapple, muskmelon, the green melon, is that five? I think I'm probably gonna need more for breakfast. I don't think that's gonna quite keep me full. So we have some leftover chia pudding that I made last night that I forgot to count the chia pudding. 
and all the stuff I did. So there's like chia seeds in that as well. So I got some extra ones last night too. Some chia, um, and I'll probably put some bana sliced banana on that maybe. And coffee, I had coffee. So coffee bean, right? That counts. I didn't have that yesterday either. Look at me, I got all these bonus points that I'm just leaving on the table. All right, someone wants my spot, gotta go. What are we having for lunch? Basically last night's leftovers, there's like the smallest amount of pasta here. So that's not gonna be very filling. I'm putting all the rest of the tofu ricotta I made on there, some sauce, and then our leftover overcooked broccoli and peas. Rice from the pasta, tomato sauce, tofu, tahini, broccoli, peas, and then I threw some nutritional yeast on top. But because it's mostly like vegetables in this, I just gotta back up a little desserty addition, which is that leftover rice pudding that I made with some apple cut up into it. So I got did I count apple already? I'm really interested to see how many different plants I eat over the course of a week too. I'd love to think I could maybe get at least 60 plants by the end of the week. I'd love it if it's more. So here's all the, the plants that we had for, I had for dinner. Don't mind Andy in the background. So the plants included in my dinner include lettuce, peppers, mangoes, onions, almonds, cilantro, jalapeno, lime, tamari, vinegar, maple syrup, garlic. So. A lot more. This is your kind of dinner, Willie. My kind of dinner. Let's eat. I don't know if I mentioned this dessert we made that has the following things in it. Quinoa, blackberry, blueberry, raspberry, pecan. I think that's it for the new things. So like four more things. I think I've hit like almost 40 plants today. Maybe more. Get my plants in, Willie. Get your plants in. How many plants you eat today? It's too busy to count. Too busy to count. <laughs> Sad. Looks like breakfast of day three. Um, so I have my lemon drink, which is I think it's four or five plants we established. I'm gonna have the rest of this quinoa that we made last night for our quote dessert. There's a little bit of maple syrup in there, but it's not too sweet. So that's already got the mixed berries, and I'm gonna add a few more: cinnamon, banana, and apple. Probably some hemp seeds and some pecans on top. Is it 10 total or 10 just for that? I'm tired. Math isn't my favorite thing to do this time of day. Coffee is a plant. And it has health stuff. I'm gonna put it on the screen here because my brain doesn't remember it right now. Yep, that stuff's healthy. And it makes me go bing. How many plants in the soup? Counting the fake pepperoni. Counting it? No, not counting it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna say mushrooms, there's coconut from the broth, mung beans. Mm -hmm. Three, four, five. How many are in the salad? Seven? Well, plus the dressing. I don't know, I'm counting the dressing. There's lots. How's the massage feel, Dad? Feels good, buddy. I'm getting massaged by the Eve. Oh, in my head, thanks for my head massage. And then I had like a rice cake with peanut butter. We're at the farm and time got away from us. And I totally forgot to record our dinner for this 30 plants thing. What did we have in that dinner? There was brown rice, peas, cabbage, carrots, kidney beans. No, pinto beans, the peanut sauce, garlic in it. I think that was it. It was a weird dinner. We were just using up leftover stuff. Hi, Lucy. She's just been out. Oh, good job. Hi, Lucy. Should be going home in two days. We went to the market this morning, so we have lots of fresh fruits. I'm gonna have some kiwi, banana, apple, blueberry, oh, cinnamon, flax, milk, and some hemp seeds on top. I'm trying to remember everything I'm having for lunch. So I got wheat with the bread, garlic hummus, cucumbers, mustard, some mustard seed, maybe. Does that count? I'm not gonna count this diet sliced cheese or these yeeves veggie ham thing. I mean, I guess there's wheat gluten in there. I don't know. It's pretty processed food. I don't think it should count. But I had this, I made a little like salad-y thing out of left leftovers. So it's like some string beans, carrots, cabbage, pinto beans, peanut sauce that has ginger in it. I'm not feeling super confident about dinner tonight because we're having Beyond Burgers and potatoes and stuff. <gasps> oh, hello, YouTube. We're talking about how many plants we ate. How many plants have you eaten today, Annie? She's gone. I don't know. Lucy is not a plant. She could be. How many fruits did he have at breakfast? That's a lot. I don't know. 
know how many, maybe like 10. Ew, ew, ew. <laughs> she has doggy breath. That I love that dog, but her you breath is me. unpleasant. I forgot to videotape dinner, but it was a Beyond Burger on a bun with pickles, ketchup, mustard. And it wasn't even a good bun, it was like a white crappy bun. I'm eating with other people and I can't control it. Um, zucchini, mushroom. Might have gone under my 30 today. It was also kind of a junky, crappy, treaty day. I might have had some chips and popcorn. It's the weekend. It's the long weekend here in Canada. So I had a little couple treaties. And I've been reading this. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do some videos using information from this because uh, lots of good stuff in there. I just wanted to really quickly tell you about a way that my family is going to be getting more plants into our systems. We were gifted this awesome garden by this company, Click and Grow. And while we're still waiting for our first crop to sprout and be ready to consume, we're having a lot of fun growing it with it just being in our house. And I know that this is gonna add to the number of plants we consume every single week for sure. They have a lot of different options of sizes of their garden that fit every single lifestyle. And they also got a lot of different options from plants, just from greens to herbs to things like peppers, wild strawberries, and they even just have flowers if you want them to be pretty. We're gonna do a much more in-depth overview of the Click and Grow in a future video, but I just kind of wanted to give them some love right now because I, I just love going over there and looking at it every day and talking about plants and encouraging them. Anyway, if you're interested in one of these systems, there's a link down below that you can click on it to get one of your own. Doing so with that link helps the channel. Now let's look at some tips for boosting our variety of foods that we eat. Stocking up. Even if you have loads of fresh fruit and snacking vegetables on hand, it really helps to have a couple things just in the cupboard for when your pantry gets dry. And by pantry, I mean like your food, your fruit, fruit basket thing. And also just for the purposes of quick meals, things like canned beans canned fruit. Try to get the ones that aren't like bathed in syrup. Just get the ones that have a juice concentrate or just water. If they're packed in water, even better. Nuts and seeds add a really awesome crunch to your salads. What's really, really great is that actually when you combine like a nice healthy fat, like a nut and seed with greens, it unlocks extra nutrients inside of those things. Magic, right? Other things like fennel and apple give your salad extra flavor and texture as well. And just sprinkling on some herbs or fresh herbs, dry herbs, whatever you want. It packs a lot more flavor and it gives you a lot more healthy things for your gut. Liven up your yogurt. So yogurt's already really, really good for you because it has bacteria inside of it that is good for your, your stomach and what all the things, you know, the, thing we, the things we've been talking about. Obviously, because this is a plant-based channel, I'm gonna recommend a plant-based yogurt. And read the label, steer clear of all those ones that are full of junk, like added sugars, and you know, especially any of the flavored yogurts, don't buy those. Buy the plain ones, add your own fruit, because that's another plant. For our homemade yogurt, I love to have it with like a lot of fruit, some granola on top. It's like creamy, it's crunchy, it's sweetie. That's not a word, but that's, that's what it is. It's my sweetie breakfast thing. Embrace your beans. I already mentioned having a can in the cupboard, but what can you use that can with? So many things. You can put them on top of a salad. They are amazing inside of wraps or soups or stews. They make great spreads. We all know about hummus, right? Hummus is made from chickpeas, but you can also use things like black beans and whatnot to create amazing spreads. You can also use chickpeas to make cookie dough. Got a recipe for that? on the website. And don't just get into a rut where you have the same bean over and over again, try to mix them up. We like to buy ours in bulk so that we always got a different variety on hand and then we just cook them in our instant pot the day of because it's really quick to do so if you've got a pressure cooker. Another tip is just batch cooking them in advance and then freezing them in like one cup portions so you can just pull them out, thaw them and use them right away. Add hidden greens to things. Basically anytime I make anything like a soup or a stew or a curry or a dal or even pasta, I will throw in spinach or kale at the end of it. And it just takes like a minute or two to wilt down and become palatable and not palatable, it tastes good anyway. But you know, it's just, it's not hard to eat. You know what I'm saying. It's a really easy way to sneak greens into your meals that are already delicious, but just adds a little extra boost of health. Also, if you're a smoothie person, it's really, really easy to throw any green into your smoothie in the morning. 
if you're a snacky kind of person, ditch the chips and the candy and go for vegetables, nuts and seeds, homemade healthy granola bars like the ones we've got on our website, sliced apples and peanut butter. You know, there's a variety of really easy, healthy things you can have for snacks. And if you're not already plant-based, consider having a meatless Monday where you don't have any animal products throughout the entire day and you really just bulk up on plants on those days. And then try for a tofu Tuesday and then a wheat germ Wednesday, tempeh Thursday, falafel Friday, smoothie Saturday, superfood salad Sunday. There we go. We got a whole week going on. When it comes to meal ideas, this YouTube channel is just chock full of them, so check through our videos. Though, if you want to go to our website, pbwj.ca, I've actually got the foods broken down into different meal categories, from breakfasts, to lunches, to dinners, treats, desserts, snacks, all those kind of things. And when you see our recipes, you're going to see we add a lot of fruit and vegetables to them. And all of those are interchangeable. That's the other thing. When you're looking at a recipe, whether it's from our channel or a cookbook or whatever, know that you can pretty much always add another fruit or another vegetable to it. Just bring it along for the ride like a little sidekick. Recipes, in my opinion, are guidelines. You know, don't let things go bad in your fridge. Pull them out. They'll get along with most other things, especially if you're making like a soup, a salad, a stir fry, any of those kind of things. A lot of those are just what I would consider like a kitchen raid recipe that you can just add things to. I know produce is more expensive now than it ever has been. So look for things that are in the discount bin. Look for apps like Flash Food that are giving away produce at the end of the day. Not giving it away, but they're, they're, it's really, really cheap. So it's, it feels like it's giving it away. Anyway, go to our website, check out the recipes there. They are all packed with ways to get plants into your diet in a whole food plant-based way. Now let's go back and see how I did for the rest of my week, and then I'll let you know how many plants I actually consumed over the course of the entire week. In today's quest for 30 plants a day, uh, I'm having oatmeal again, but I'm adding wheat germ to it because I'm reading Dr. Greger's new book, How Not to Age, and wheat germ is one of the things it recommends for one of the things. Steel cut oats with uh, blueberries, banana, pears, some pecans in there, and sprinkles some hemp, hemp, hemp seeds on top. Rufus is observing the world. You see anything good, Rufus? Nope. Plants for lunch. So this has rice, carrots, edamame, slash soy, peppers, pineapple, tomato, tamari, green beans. And I have like a little cookie. Some leftover cookies we have that have like some almond pulp from our milky plant machine when we made our milk. Tonight's dinner was a recipe that I am working on for potentially our cookbook. It's an, a, al, an Alfredo sauce. Wooly loved it, as you can see by her comments here. Now this is delicious. Yeah? Creamy. I haven't had fettuccine Alfredo in a really, really, really long time. It could be 20 years or more. It tastes so good. So without giving away the ingredients just yet, uh, there was seven ingredients in the sauce. Plus I got a cap of noodles, some vegetables, the mushroom and the broccoli. Uh, and then I had like an apple nacho for dessert, which is just like an apple, some peanut butter drizzled on it and some chocolate covered quinoa. Ooh, quinoa, I forgot to count that one. So I think in total I had 29, just shy. It happens. Breakfast food stuff. Number plants, haven't had coffee yet. That'd be one of them. I had my detox drink. I'm gonna make a smoothie bowl. I had some frozen sweet potato in the freezer. So I'm gonna use that, some mango, have some fresh blueberries, and mix that with some uh, almond milk and top it with some granola and wheat germ and some hemp seeds on top. So lunch is gonna be a mishmash. I've got a canned lentil soup that has other things in it pretty marginally. So let's just say lentils. I got some cucumber, snap peas, peas, hummus, so chickpeas, plus some tahini in there, which I already counted for my breakfast, a rice cracker, pear, peanut butter, jam on there, a licorice tea, all those things. We're having a friend over for dinner, so I just want to remember all my plants I'm having now for dinner. We have a green onion, I've got bok choy, I have tofu, red curry, which is not- is that a plant of some kind? Curry? The spice? Oh, like chili. Sure, chili. Um, maple syrup is there, 
rice noodles, coconut milk, green onions, cashews. I think I got it all. Oh, bean sprouts. And um, Willie's making banana bread. So I have gonna have banana and there's almond butter in there and oats, which I think I already have that and flax, right? And the flax yet today. So you know a lot, all the good stuff, more plants. I think I'm well over 30 today. This is my final day of counting my plants. I mean, let's be honest, I'm probably gonna count them as I go along in the rest of my life. I'm gonna be more probably present about the balance, although I thought I was before, but I just noticed some conscious things where I've shifted from eating one thing, knowing I'm probably gonna tick that box off later on in the day with something else I'm gonna eat. So that's been interesting, that little change I've had within me. Got my lemon drink to start the day. Ah, it's got a bite to it. I'm gonna make yogurt granola bowl. It's gonna be mixed berries. So there's like three servings of berries in there. I'm gonna use apple today and a banana. And I mix that with some of uh, some homemade soy yogurt and then top it with uh, wheat germ, hemp seeds and granola. Whatever that is, it's a lot. Like yesterday my breakfast was 15, I think, because of all the little things inside of my, my recipes. Again, I'm probably not getting a full portion of everything, but it's enough. It's something that your body's gonna use. So for lunch, uh, Wooly took most of the leftovers from last night, but I'm gonna take a little bit. So I have a little bit of that rice curry. Probably not enough to call it a portion of anything, but there's some tofu in there. I had to top that up with some lentil soup. Let's just see what's actually in here. Lentils, onions, carrots, celery, potatoes, tomatoes, spinach, beans. But none of that, like it's mostly lentils. So I'd be hard pressed to say I'm getting like a serving of any of those things. I'll probably have some carrots, snap peas on the side, maybe like a little piece of chocolate. So, you know, that's like what? I don't know, at least 10 things there, I'm sure. Don't mind the guitar listen going on in the background. So I made like a chicken burger type thing out of tofu. Let's say tofu burger. Uh, and so some like wheat breading on there, like a buffalo sauce that I homemade. So we got some chili spices in there, potato, pickles, lettuce, Brussels sprouts, ketchup. Does that count for anything? Probably not. Uh, and my kombucha. So kombucha. That's what I had for my dinner. And it's my last day. So stick around to see how many vegetables I had this week. So how many plants do you think I consumed over the course of an entire week? Do you wanna revise your guest downstairs? Downstairs meaning in the description. Drum roll please. Over the course of this week, I ate 82 different plants. Thanks Kermit. Not bad, right? I honestly, Wanted to actually get a lot higher than that. I was hoping I would hit at least 90 or 120, but 82 is pretty good considering they're saying get at least 30. And honestly, I was definitely like trying to game it a little bit and add a few more things to every meal, but this is not an untypical way of how we eat in our house. We always try to create a balance in meals. If I'm having one kind of bean or legume in one meal, I try to have a different one in the next meal. I try not to have tofu more than a few times a week. I try to mix up my fruits that I have in my breakfast. Maybe in another video, I will try to get 30 different plants every single day of the week, which would be 210 plants a week. Is that math right? I think it is. Not a math guy. We already talked about that earlier. If you wanna see me try to accomplish that insane task, let me know in the comments down below and, and I, will, I will consider it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please consider doing so for more videos like this and other fun things. And YouTube wants you to watch this video next. They know you, they know your viewing habits, and they're like, stick around, because this PB and J, PB with J video, I should say, is the best. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I think, yeah, it's great, it's the best.